What's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis Sickle, and I was just looking at the best 529 college savings plan lists, the same list that you're probably looking at yourself. And it included Forbes. I was looking at savingforcollege.com, Investopedia, and also on Money Magazine. And the lists do a good job at breaking things down, but I don't really think they nailed it as far as picking the best 529 plan. Now, before I kind of get into what I would choose as the best 529 plan for 2023 right now, I will say this, it's not gonna be the same for everybody and it does depend on your specific situation. For example, if you have a 529 plan in your state and you have a state income tax, that could be different for somebody like myself who's in the state of Florida who doesn't have that state income tax because you could be getting a tax deduction or a tax credit on your state income taxes. So that's why it's not always black and white or it's not gonna be the same for everybody. But let's take a look at these lists together because if we look at them, the best 529 plans of 2023, their criteria and their guidance is on point with looking at fees and Sure, fees could be looked at to a degree, but it's not all about fees. I think it's more about performance, but it's also not about performance either because if you just go with the best performer, might not always be the best long-term investment or the one that will work for your 529 plan. So again, I just wanted to point that out, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of these lists. So if you look at Forbes's website and you scroll down just a little bit, you might come across this map and it says select your state to find the right 529 plan. And this to me is a little misleading because let's say that you're in the state of California, for example, and you click on it. It's gonna give you the plans that are available, not just to you, but in the state of California. And California has a state income tax, but it's one of those states that doesn't have a benefit to using their own state's 529 college savings plan. So if you were to click on a state like that, I would expect that it would pull what is the actual best 529 plan, or at least a few of them in addition to their own state's 529 plan and put that front and center. Now, if we look back at their explanation, if you actually click into some of these plans, then they will tell you that they don't offer, like here it says, California doesn't offer a state tax benefit, but it would kind of lead you to believe that might be the plan that you want to choose. And let alone, again, you don't need to use your own state's 529 plan, but they're state-sponsored plans. So that's how they're set up. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to use a 529 plan, but I heard my state's no good and they don't realize they can go elsewhere. You can, you can actually have multiple states, 529 plans at the same time, which is exactly what I have. So let's continue to go through this list. So Forbes has it broken down by the state and then they have the best overall 529 plans. And I'm gonna come back to this in a second, but here's the list really quickly. And I've talked about the Ohio plan before and I've talked about the New York plan before. Both are good plans, but they might not be the best plan. Now, going over to savingforcollege.com also is a great resource with a lot of similar information, and they've kind of categorized it a little bit differently. But again, they have this best for my state. And if you choose, let's see what California has. If we choose California, the same thing. It pulls the California 529 plan, but is it really the best for my state or the best one that is from my state? I mean, some states have multiple 529 plans, but it's, if you're in the state of California, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this plan is probably not the one you should choose anyways. Um, I haven't looked at too extensively, but I think that there's a better plan out there. And the same thing, if you go to like New York, New York, it's only going to pull that state's 529 plan. So they should remove the best for my state and they should just say my state offerings also with a little note or an asterisk that says you can use any state's 529 college savings plan. And there are a ton of them. I haven't gone through all of them. There are a ton of them, but I'm pretty sure the one that I'm gonna show you is probably a great option, if not the best option. Now it has lowest fees and best performance. I don't like 
to look at the lowest cost provider because it doesn't always, it doesn't tell you the whole story. It should really be net of fees, which really is all about performance. And that's what it should really be about. Then take a look at, again, which investments you're gonna use. And that's for a different video. But you can choose a really risky investment with a really high rate of return because you kind of got lucky with that investment or historically, um, those investment returns were higher than something else like the S&P 500. But there is a lot to be said about choosing an investment that's going to be appropriate for your time horizon and what you're trying to do. And for the most part, I think the an S&P 500 fund is going to do just fine in a 529 plan in general. Again, it's not a blanket statement, not right for everybody, but in general, it's probably going to get you the diversification and the returns that you're probably looking for. So again, we're just looking at all this stuff with a grain of salt, but I'm just pointing it out to help give you some guidance of where you should look. So if we're going back to the top list, again, best rated, uh, you know, they have some criteria. I, I couldn't figure out what it is because when I clicked on the link, it just brought me back to basically the same page and didn't really tell me a whole lot. But best rated by whatever metrics they're using. I do think that the 529 from New York is a pretty decent plan, but in a few, few minutes, I'm gonna explain why I don't think it's the best plan. The Alaska 529, they have this education plans. Uh, where is this from? Um, if we look into it, it is a census's plan, but I don't know what state this is actually in, um, but we can come back to that. But they're saying that these, you know, this is the best plan. And I think a lot of people are probably going to come here and say, oh, this is the short list. This is where I should look. But they seem to be missing what I would think is the best plan. So... I put them all into this sheet right here and we can go to Investopedia's really quickly. They have a few different categories, best overall. They, they chose the Ohio plan. I did a video on that a couple of weeks ago. Best for big savers, the Utah plan. Again, another misleading category. Best variety, uh, best for safe investors. Don't even know what that really means. And best for low fees. Maybe they just chose a stable value fund for this safe investors and best for low fees, New York's 529 plan. I actually would disagree with that. I'll show you why. And then Money Magazine seem to have, really just we're going for keywords so you click on their link. Because if you look at these rankings, best for high risk tolerance, I mean, whatever that means. Uh, best for wide availability, best reputation, says who? you know, best for um, diverse investment options. I think they just came out with a bunch of categories to come up with a bunch of categories. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But anyways, I took all those top ones and I put them in here. And the one that showed up quite a bit was the New York 529 College Savings Plan. Another one was the Ohio Plan. And then the Illinois Plan. I think the Illinois Plan comes up because it gets a good, I believe it's a tax deduction of $20,000. If you contribute up to $20,000, you can get a state income tax deduction. But again, if you're not in the state of Illinois, then it doesn't matter. It's, it basically just cross it off the list um, because it puts itself in line with all of the other plans. So anyways, what there is a plan that's not on here. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these uh, plans a little bit closer. So we looked at New York's plan. And it's basically just loaded up with Vanguard funds, but you can't choose your individual investments. So if you are digging into the New York 529 plan, they'll give you either age-based portfolios, which I'm not a fan of because they get more conservative based on the age, but not to your goal. So if you're trying to really get that extra performance in the last few years because you're a little bit late to the game, then an age-based portfolio might be a little too conservative for you and then an individual portfolio. They're just pre-built portfolios that you can choose. And I again, I didn't like that because I, I, I like to choose the individual investments, even if it's just looking at um, exchange traded funds or index funds, which most of these plans are now, which is nice to see in 529 plans. And if you've looked at some of my other videos, I really don't, I used to not like 529s at all because they were just loaded with junk mutual funds and fees and they just, they just didn't seem very attractive to me to figure out how to invest elsewhere. But that has since changed and they are fairly good um, options to save for college, if not one of the only options. 
Now, if we go back and we take a look at that, and I was showing you the fee, the fee structure here before. So if we decide that we want just Vanguard funds, which seem to pop up in most all of most I mean, most of these plans, you're gonna have Vanguard funds. But here's something that really struck me as strange when I'm looking back for those fees really quickly. Fees. And where do those fees go? Here they are. So for the New York plan, you're gonna pay basically 12 basis points or 0.12 of 1%. So a very small fee. However, there are other plans which sig with significantly smaller fees. So I had this idea that, okay, if they're Vanguard funds, wouldn't it make sense just to go direct to Vanguard? And oddly enough, the answer was no, um, because when you go to Vanguard, and let's just bring it up here really quickly, Vanguard 529 plan. It made no sense. It still makes no sense to me why Vanguard does this, but they have a minimum investment. And I don't even know where it is on this page. Um, a minimum investment of $3,000. So if you're just starting out, it's, it's almost immediately off the table, but also strangely enough, it's not even the cheapest plan, even with Vanguard funds, which also made no sense to me. So they have some target date funds here or target enrollment portfolios. Again, I'm just not a big fan of the pre-built portfolios because I just like to have that control. And this, these target date funds will continue to get more conservative and they just balance it between stocks and bonds. But the bonds are bond funds, not individual bonds. Again, do more re research into the bonds versus bond funds because the definition of a bond and a bond fund are kind of kind of put you in two different directions. So um, again, I have a video on that as well. But let's take a look. So you can access the ax the Vanguard fund or 529 plan if you don't want to save $3,000 day one or have that money to roll over to the plan. If you do, then maybe it's an option that you take a look at. But the Ohio plan too has one of these funds. And if we just stick with the Vanguard S&P 500 fund, because that's what I was just looking for. Um, that's what I've actually put all of my kids in, just an S&P 500 fund so I can just set it and forget it but the fund is 0 0.02 basis points. So it's very cheap, but look at all the other fees that Ohio then sticks in there and bringing that total fee to 0.145. And why am I pointing out um, Ohio's plan? Because I believe it was, yeah, right here. Best 529 plan for college savings 2023 from Investopedia. They chose Ohio's college advantage is our pick for the best 529 plan even if you don't live in Ohio. Now, if I chose that fund, I'm going to be paying 1.45 um, in the Ohio plan right there. That's going to be my all-in expense ratio there. And I, I don't remember off the top of my head, even though, if I, even though I just opened up one of these plans um, for Ohio in a previous video, I don't know if there's other fees associated with this off the top of my head. But what I do know is... If we go over to even the New York plan, again, you, you can't invest in just an S&P 500 fund, but that total fee is 0.12 basis points or 12 basis points or 0.12 of 1%. So that is, that's how you say it. So it'd be 12 basis points. There's 100 basis points, 100 basis points in 1%. So that's 12 basis points. So very small fee, but apples to apples for playing the fee game, then go to the one with the lowest fees if you're getting the same exact investment. And in this case, um, that would be Florida. So Florida is actually the cheapest of the plans. And that is because they don't have any other fees. But if you were to look at the average fees, look at this, 0 0.02 to 0 0.74, you might be deterred by that. But if I were to choose my own investment options, then... We can go take a look at that and let's go look at the Florida 529 plan and we can pull it up. And I don't even like the URL of their website, My Florida Prepaid. It's a prepaid plan and a savings plan all on the same website. But let's look at our investment options. And if we go down to building our own portfolio and where is it? It is going to be somewhere right in front of me. It is going to be the, yeah, there it is, US large cap. 
So that's that's the basis points. That's the one that's two BPS, that's basis points, 0 0.02 of 1%. That's the Vanguard fund, okay? That's the S&P 500 index fund. That's it. That's all you're going to pay for the same exact fund in the Florida in the Florida 529 college savings plan. Again, it says up here the Florida prepaid plan, but they have a savings plan. That used to not be the case. This was the first 529 plan or the sec first or second one that I've ever opened and for myself or for my kids. And it wasn't as good. It wasn't as attractive. I originally opened it up because they were just offering, I think it was like $50 per account that you opened. So I was like, all right, I'll just put money and get a hundred percent rate of return. And that's basically it. And just put a little bit more into it, but they've since updated it to have the Vanguard funds, which are notoriously low cost, low fees. And in this case, they have that S&P 500 fund. So the same fund I'm getting at a fraction of the cost from the Ohio plan. So in my opinion, if you're gonna use an S&P 500 fund, then the Florida 529 college savings plan is the way to go. So that is, in my opinion, the best plan as of right now, if that's what you're choosing. If you want one of those more robust uh, portfolios, maybe one of the other plans is better, but in that case, it's not to me. So I'm using the S&P 500 fund, set it and forget it, and that's what I'm gonna go with. So go, go take a look at the Florida 529 College Savings Plan now. It doesn't end up on any of these lists, but um, it, it basically checks all the boxes that you could want, whether it's, it's, it's a relatively easy plan to contribute to, rel relatively easy plan to open up, and they have great investment options inside of it. So hopefully that has helped. Hopefully you uh, are on your way to starting to save for your 529 college savings plan. If you have any questions on this stuff, let me know in the comments down below and we'll see you on the next one.